Hi, I'm Norman Perolo, a furniture designer, maker of Perolo Design and woodworking educator of wood skills. And today I'll delve into the shooting board and how I use it in my furniture making. I'll describe all the components of the shooting board, the attachments I use, and uh, the different versions of shooting board I have. Over the years, I've actually added to the shooting board. So I've improved upon the, my, the design of my shooting boards. I've added attachments, and I've also developed a left and right hand version of the shooting board, and one with track for a dedicated shooting plane and uh, uh, the conventional shooting board that we utilize different uh, long sole planes, a low angle jack plane, a, a four plane, a miter, an iron miter plane I have in my hand here. So this is more of a standard shooting board and this is more of a, a little advanced shooting board with a dedicated track and this is my go-to shooting board right now. So stay tuned and uh, you'll find out quite a bit more about how shooting boards work and how you can incorporate them in your own furniture making. I'm Norm Perolo from Wood Skills, and I'd like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. Well, this is a, this is a shooting board. It's the it's most basic one that I've, uh, one of my earlier ones. I did an article for Fine Woodworking a number of years ago, and they came up and we created a bunch of bench accessories, uh, several more bench accessories to be able to work on the workbench book holding specifically. One of the uh, accessories in the article was a shooting board. So we actually created two shooting boards while they were here filming and photographing. So this is an attachment for 45 degree angle. So this is an attachment and it bolts into here. So it's something I designed several years ago. And I have another one for case miters on a different shooting board. So let's assume the shooting board, what it does is it, it uh, creates a, a 90, 90 degree edge if you're using uh, just a straight fence. 90 degree edge with uh, in conjunction with a long sole plane. Now this particular shooting board is an earlier one, so what I would use is, uh, I think this was the kind of plane I would use back then. And it's designed for its right hand orientation. So if I'm, you notice that that sound is actually it's individual shavings coming off. And this creates a perfect 90 degree smooth surface. Now, because it's a uh, right hand orientation, I have problems with it. I tend not to use it as much as uh, it's one of the probably one of the uh, shooting boards I developed for uh, the fine woodworking articles. I had to create both a left hand and, and a right hand one. And this is uh, this works really well. A shooting board along with uh, a long sold, uh, in this case, four plane because it's uh, as long as the, uh, the side and the bottom of the plane are 90 degrees to each other. So it works really well if you're starting out and you're making your first shooting board. And I, again, I offer plans for that at woodskills.com. So you can use either that or use a, uh, a bevel up jack. It's a little shorter than this guy. Also, this works equally well. Got noise. We talk about how these work, people always ask, uh, aren't you actually shaving part of the fence away every time? Not, not so, because, uh, because of this little gap at the bottom, it keeps the, uh, the sole from, from the edge just, just enough to avoid hitting the fence. So, so I talk about that in my course and I explain how that works. So that's the premise. This little gap at the bottom is a little protrudes just enough to keep the, the sole of the plane away from the, uh, the fence. question that most people ask or they're stumped with is how doesn't the the blade on the uh, on the hand plane continuously shave 
the edge of the baseboard and the fence. And I'll explain that. What I've done is I've highlighted a portion of the uh, sole of the hand plane where there is no blade. So for example, the blade is only, this is uh, just about a quarter of an inch from either side. So this, this area does not have a blade protruding. And this is the actual reference, a reference part of the, uh, the sole that, that uh, is used to, to bear against the uh, baseboard. And this is what keeps the hand plane from continuously shaving both the uh, baseboard and the fence components. The portion of the, uh, the edge of the runway, the uh, lower edge of the uh, base, baseboard, I'll, I'll just demonstrate. This is uh, with the blue tape. This is the part that, uh, that the actual sole of the plane, the portion I've shown just before with the blue tape, rides over. So this, this prevents uh, further wear or further trimming of the both fence and upper portion of the baseboard beyond a certain point. So when, it, when the uh, shooting board is new, you'll have some trimming occur here, depending on how deep you set your blade. But once, once that's accomplished, this uh, lower highlighted blue portion will, will prevent the, uh, the blade of the plane from, uh, from removing any more material from the shooting board. And that's, that's how shooting boards actually work. Or, so the, the shooting board itself is uh, working with hand tools. Really, really neat to make one of these, build one of these. They're very straightforward to make. I offer plans. It uh, comes with it. You can create it with attachments, and that's the difference with, uh, with mine. Though this is the uh, 45. So this works. Uh, bolting this down. So if I'm doing a 45 again, I would. Uh, So this cleans the uh, it's a little too thick. Yeah, it's 45 degree adjustment. It's 45 degrees. So, so I'll put that aside. Again, if you're building a basic one, you can use one of your existing long sole planes to uh, use the shooting board. The more recent shooting board I'm using. And I'll show you that. This is my uh, my most recent go-to shooting board. And I'll tell you what I've done with this. This is actually the uh, one of the original shooting boards with left-hand orientation that I created for that fine woodworking article way back when. And this uh, this attachment uh, does case miters. So yeah, this is uh, an example of a case miter. This is uh, 45 degrees. So this would be uh, a small compartment. A box, a drawer, and so it's important to have the, uh, the corners of 45 degrees, and that's accomplished through the uh, through this uh, this attachment. So if I'm not using the attachment, I can uh, switch it up. With... So if I push this away, this would be uh, the other attachment. Again, this does uh, this does case miters and this does face miters. So a face miter, an idea. This is a this is a face miter. So the uh, the idea is the same. Now the difference between this shooting board and the one I showed you earlier. This is a uh, <laughs> It's a dedicated shooting plane. You can purchase this from uh, Vertas or Lee Nielsen still, I think they still market it. And it uh, rides, uh, the original version of this shooting board was, uh, it didn't have a track, it had the track, but not this, not this portion of the track to lock the, uh, the shooting plane in. And you can see how it's set up, how beautifully it glides. What this does, this system, what it does is it removes that variable of having to keep the shooting uh, plane against the fence. So that relieves that issue, and then it's just a matter of holding the component against uh, the fence, and then uh, gliding this back and forth. It works. It's beautiful. It's a really a, a real step above the uh, the other one, but the other one I I used the conventional one that I shown earlier for for many many years. Actually, I was trying to avoid purchasing one of these, and an opportunity to get one came up, so why not? And this again, it's uh, a case miter and it's set for 45. So 
So I, this is critical to check this to make sure it's 45. So, so that's that attachment. And you'll notice that this, uh, this shooting board is in left-hand orientation. I'm left-handed, so it's the one I use for the most part. And I've got three others that maybe another left-handed one, I'm not sure. So, so I'm not doing uh, face or case miters. I'm doing 90 degree corn edges. And that's, that's the beauty of this. So that's a perfect uh, uh, 90 degree. If you're measuring uh, for square or, uh, or an angle, a specific angle, a little technique or a little tip is, is to not have the, uh, the gauge against the wood because it's very easy not to see the, uh, the gaps. So keep it away just enough and then try to determine if the gap is uniform from one end to the other, like I'm showing now. So just like I'll exaggerate that. That's what I'm talking about, that gap. But bring it down to where you can actually see the gap. Because if you have it too close, it sort of masks the ridges and the valleys. So that's a, that's a shooting board wax block to uh, keep your planes lubricated and uh, keep them from, uh, keep the rust away too. So I tend to wipe this on, on the bottoms of my, uh, or on the, not the bottoms, but the, uh, in this case, it is the bottom. It looks like the side, but it's the bottom. They glide better. So I tend to use that. I really, really take care of my tools because I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I like to only purchase tools once. So please subscribe to my YouTube woodworking channel where I share more of my woodworking techniques, my, uh, my woodworking philosophy, my thoughts on woodworking and uh, all the challenges I've experienced. And uh, I introduce some of the uh, new forms of woodworking I've discovered. And also visit uh, woodskills.com where I have a good selection of uh, my books, both in print and digital format on woodworking and uh, all my online courses. And uh, I offer, also offer some woodworking plans. I have maintained a, uh, a regular blog on uh, what I've got going on in my workshop and, uh, and woodworking in general. So enjoy.